Welcome to the Predictable Revenue Podcast, where sales leaders teach you what's working for them and how you can build it yourself. This episode of the Predictable Revenue Podcast is brought to you by our sales coaching and consulting services. Are you looking to create repeatable, scalable, and predictable revenue? We've helped thousands of companies grow their business with tailored expert advice backed by testing to ensure they establish the best practices that'll work for them. Head over to bit.ly forward slash predictable revenue coaching to learn more. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Predictable Revenue Podcast. Um, Today, we're going to be talking about one element of the sales cycle that seems to be untouched by I don't know, improvements in technology, improvements in process, improvements in systems. It's just this one kind of relic that remains the same as it's been for so long. Uh, And it doesn't make sense that we've left it like that. We're improving every other part of the sales cycle. We should be improving that bit too. So we'll dive into that in just a second. So I'm your host, Sarah Hicks. And today on the Predictable Revenue Podcast, I'm going to be chatting with an expert about how contracts can put the wind in everyone's sales. Uh, He's currently the VP of Global Revenue at the Danish all-in-one contract management platform, platform Contract Book. Um, He has an extensive background in sales and business development. He was formerly the VP at Optimove. He was a founding member of Pavilion, which is one of the largest communities of sales professionals. Um, And before taking the role of VP of Global Revenue, Yoav oversaw Contract Book's successful U.S. expansion as general manager, uh, a role that he also held at his previous company, Optimove. So Yoav Seuss, welcome to the Predictable Revenue Podcast. Thank you very much, Sarah. I'm excited to be here. Me too. So tell me about this idea that the contract is just stuck in the past. Contracts are interesting um, because if you ask any salesperson out there, it's both the most dreaded part of a sales process and also the most exciting part, right? Anybody who's ever run a deal knows the feeling of constantly checking your email inbox to see whether the prospect has signed, right? So on the one hand, it's this like amazing celebratory moment. And, you know, I think that everybody, whether they're sales professionals or not, has a contract that they remember in their life, an agreement that they remember in their life. You know, if it's getting an apartment for the first time on your own or whether it's signing that deal or whatever. So there's something really exciting about it. But if you ask the vast majority of people, and I've tested this out quite a bit, do you enjoy working with your contracts? I've literally never, ever heard anybody say yes. And I think that when you think about kind of the world of business generally, it's improved, it's changed, very little things look like they did in the early 90s, right? And if you think about contracts, 99% of companies in the world are still using PDFs and word processes to manage their contracts. And like the PDF came out in 1993. A lot of people doing sales today weren't even born in 1993, right? So it's shocking it's shocking and it's amazing and i think that the reason that people didn't want to touch this area is because it's scary contracts Mm. evoke this this feeling of fear and i think that what we want to tackle is we want to change that right we want to make the contract smarter easier to work with the reason to celebrate right to evoke happy emotions for people and not make it this thing that like this horrible tax this necessary evil right you can change that you can make it be different for you as business yeah Absolutely. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Uh, You're totally right. Yeah, so many companies are just using, yeah, an online version of a paper contract. That's like as good as it gets. Exactly. (laughs) There's maybe some of those where you like underline to make a nice little gap for a for a signature, and then you send somebody that contract, and you're like, I hope you got Adobe Acrobat (laughs) because you need to figure out how to sign this. Um. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So, um, what? what's the better way to do it? How would you approach this from a different perspective if you could modernize that process? I mean, I think that you want to make the process as seamless as you can, and you want to make it as automated as you can, where you can, right? And I think that it's also important to say, you know, not every contract should be automated. I would say that every contract should be digital. I mean, I think that, you know, of course, Contract Book, and there are other companies out there which are trying to change the way in which you work, right? So, I would recommend, you know, being able to have a digital platform on which you can draft your contract, right? So you can make sure that you have the appropriate data inside it, right? Just to give you an example, a lot of companies might have 
different contracts based on the deal size, right? So if you think about a company which is paying you $150,000, you may be more open to negotiating with them than you are a company paying you $5,000 a year or a month or what have you, right? So I think that the first thing is being able to make sure that your sales reps are always using the right contract, right? Make it flawless, make it impossible for people to mess that up, right? That's the first thing that I would recommend. And there are a lot of really great companies out there which can integrate into your CRM, take data from there and fill it in your contract, make sure that it can also pick the right template and make sure that you've got the right information in there, right? That's part one, the easiest part. But the second part to me, which is also super cru crucial, is the collaboration on a contract. And I think that this is an area that people don't often think about it as part of the contracting process. But like, let's think about, you know, even for you or for us, a contract book, when we send out a contract, very often we need people internally to sign off on it. Right now, that process is done in a very disjointed way. So if I want to give you a discount, Sarah, maybe I need to reach out to my manager. If I want to change the indemnification clause, maybe I need to, to chat to legal. If I need to change, you know, whether we can use their opt-out, whether we can use their logo, I need to go to marketing. So there's a lot of stakeholders. There's a lot of communication. Right now, that process is happening in lots of different places. So it's happening on Slack or Teams, God forbid. It's happening, sorry, Microsoft. Um, it, maybe it's <laughs> happening across email, text messages, WhatsApp, whatever it is. And I, I, what I would recommend is have that all on your contract, right? Have all of that back and forth, have all of those discussions on your contract in a collaborative environment, right? In the same way that, you know, today when you're using Google Docs or something of that sort, you've got the, you've got the comments, you've got the history, you've got the changes. You should be demanding the exact same thing for your contracts, right? So that makes the contract from this, you know, you call the digital paper, which it is today, well, not digital, like a, just an electronic version of your contract. Yeah. When you're able to have a log of every change, you're able to have a log of every comment that was made, and you can always go back and reference that. I think that that's also a really key part of your contract because the amount of times you know that I've had to go back and say, "Hey, why did you give these guys a uh, you know a 30 day opt out yeah, in the yeah. contract?" And then they go, you, are, you said that we can do it," and I go, "Show me where I said that." Right, <laughs> and then you're searching in Slack and you're trying to find all the things. So making sure that that document becomes collaborative is really important. That's the second thing. Signature is a commodity, right? Signing, you've got great companies out there. Hello Sign, Adobe Sign, DocuSign, all the signs, lots of signs. But I think that, you know, contracts also really only start after they were signed, right? If you think about a contract, typically you're going to be spending maybe 1%, 5% of the time of that relationship between you and that other party negotiating the contract. But what about afterwards? Think about how much crucial information exists inside that contract, which today is locked away in basically a filing cabinet, right? We call that filing cabinet a digital one, right? Because it's in a folder on my desktop. But ultimately, I, I'll give you a real example. My wife yesterday had to check what was the opt-out clause for a certain customer. And she had to go find the PDF, which is saved somewhere in finances, you know, folders. She needs to get permission to open it. She needed to re read through all of it. There's a better way, right? When it's truly digital, you can use the assets that exist that exist inside that contract and make sure that it's shared with the right people, right? For example, make sure that your customer success team just gets the information that they need. Don't send them reading a send them to read a yeah. 30 page contract to extract five data points. They need five. Marketing needs another three. Finance needs another four. Operations be able to use that data, right? And be able to automate a lot of the processes, whether it's, you know, a new employee that you knew that you just hired. Wouldn't it be great if once they signed their contract, it already created a ticket immediately for IT to open up an email for them mm -hmm. and it sent them, you know, a swag pack to their house. That's the power of contracts. Contracts, contracts are like, you know, these really cool moments. We talked about it at the beginning, right? These great yeah. moments. Use those moments. There's so much information in there that we can use to make things easier and better for everybody. And, and I think there's just a huge missed opportunity for companies. Absolutely. So when you see this being done well, when you see the right tools in place that that help you utilize all this data and you know streamline these processes, get all those collaborators in one place, what impact does it have on the sales cycle, on the sales process? Great question. So I think that on the sales process, what you see, one is it get it get it gets much shorter, right? Because 
if you think about the amount of time that it takes very often, even inside a company, when we've made the decision to send a contract until we get it out the door, right? I need to ask that person, that person. I need, and for example, you know, I was recently speaking to one of our customers that told me that before they used contract book, he had to look at each and every one of the contracts before they got sent out. He wanted to review each one. Why? Because he was scared the, con- the changes were made. What we did yeah. with contract book is we automated that. We basically said, hey, if everything is standard, is that if everything is templated, it goes out automatically. Your reps don't even need to talk to you. So you're cutting down time there. And we all know that the, you know, the time kills all deals is true. And I think that you know, when a customer has given you a verbal and they're ready to go, give them that contract as quickly as possible. And mm-hmm. due to the fact that you don't need to ask legal for the template, it will be done automatically. Due to the fact that unless something is kind of out of the ordinary, you know, it's going to go through automatically. You can really cut down that time from the moment that you want to send it out to the moment it's in front of your prospect, which also impacts the amount of time that it takes to sign. And I think that also, you know, contract book is built in such a way that even the other party, right, it's a better experience for them. I don't know if you've signed with, with you know, DocuSign recently or with PandaDoc. It's a pretty vanilla experience. You come in, you fill in your details, you hit, you know, sign or whatever it is. But when you work with contract book, you can give the other party, for example, automatically notifying them saying, hey, there's a renewal clause in here. Do you want to be reminded of this? Mm-hmm. Or, hey, do you want to share this automatically with everybody? Right. I think that you're also uh, portraying to the other party that you're negotiating with, that you're a modern business, that your contracts are digital, that, you know, for example, one of the things that we do in-house, kind of eating our own dog food, we send each and every one of our customers a notification 30 days before that contract ends. And that's automatically hard-coded into the contract, right? So it's just a way of showing them the contract can be a lot more than this dead relic, right? This PDF, which was wonderful when we printed. But, you know, I'll ask you, Sarah, when did you last print a contract? We were just talking the other day internally about how none of us own a printer. And then there's this one thing that'll pop up like once every two years. Right. And you're like, man, I really need a printer. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and I think that, you know, the PDF literally came out for printers, right? It came out so that the pages yeah. would always look the same. And it was great. And I think, you know, I, I have a tremendous respect for the PDF. I think that it's done amazing things, but it's time to move on, right? Like, I also really love my BlackBerry and I had to give that up. And fast <laughs> machines and telexes, it's, I'm not, you know, the PDF was great, but I think that we have the opportunity today to really leverage the data inside contracts. And that yeah. data, that's the real source of truth in the business, right? You hear people say things like, my source of truth is Salesforce. And one of the CFOs that we worked with, he once told me, hey, if you get audited, nobody cares what your Salesforce says. No. Everybody cares what your contracts <laughs> yeah. say. When you go and raise a round of funding and you want to be able to easily share your contract and easily show them which ones are out of the, you know, the ordinary, being able to have that access to contracts, being able to have everything in one place, being able to make sure that everything is synced and done and automated is incredibly powerful for a business. Absolutely. And you mentioned one of the other areas that uh, salespeople tend to kind of, or I guess people in general tend to forget about the contract is in that handover between that salesperson and the customer success person. So what kind of impact do you see on on that side, on the delivery side of the business when the the right tools are in place? Yeah, so I, I I think that, you know, I'm a salesperson myself. I'm a proud salesperson. And the truth is that after a deal is signed, you know, not top of my list anymore, right? Like as a salesperson, today I'm also in charge of success. I care about it very deeply, but generally as a salesperson, right? It's signed, you're on to the next one. And I think that what contract book allows you to do is to basically be able to say that once a contract is signed, that handover will be smooth because the customer success team, for example, the operations team or whoever needs the information is going to get exactly what they need from the contract. And that's going to be handed over immediately, right? There's no waiting. All of the information is going to be there. No assumptions, right? There have been so many times, for example, where a contract might have a start date in the future, right? So you're signing it today, but they're only going to start a month and a half. So who's going to remember that it's in a month and a half? Who's going to set up that? Like, who's going to do that? It's not going to be the salesperson. I can tell you that. So I I think that just creating a process in which, you know, you're using the data. Data, you know, it's such a cliche idea, but, but, you know, when you take it to the nuts and bolts, I'll remind you 10 days before you should schedule a kickoff with this person. This is the contact person you should be reaching out to as the team owner for the product. This is the contact person for billing have that flow directly into your billing system as well so that you don't need to go back to a customer that just signed with you and say, hey, 
So who should we talk to an accounts payable? We have some issues yeah, there, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, right? Making it frictionless. And I think that the, that's, you know, contracts, the, the Guild of Lawyers, and I'm a lawyer myself, right? So I feel comfortable saying this, but like the Guild of Lawyers has made it hard to work with contracts on purpose so that we keep paying them extortionate rates. And contracts <laughs> should be simple. Contracts should be simple. And I think that simple, automated, that's the future. And you, we hear this from a lot of the general counsels that work with us, right? We can make it simple. We can make it, uh, you know, a lot more business oriented, a lot more operational. And I think that that's where you see a tremendous amount of value because it becomes frictionless. And I think that contracts create unnecessary anxiety. 90% of cases, and again, you hear this from a lot of the legal counsel that we work with, in 90% of cases, contracts are identical to the one that went before them. The only thing that's yeah. changed is the names of the people, the dates, the prices maybe, but it's the same contract again and again. Make it easy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what about uh, the tools that you should be using then? We've kind of, we've alluded to, to contract book, but tell me about the right, the right tool for this and how that works. For contract management? Yeah. There's only contract book. I'm kind of joking. There, there's, a, there's other companies out there as well, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely, um, you know, I think the contract book has taken a very, very interesting approach to this, very much kind of rethinking. There are a lot of companies in the contract management space which have tried to solve the PDF. Um, and that's very, very hard to do, as I'm sure they would uh, tell you privately. Passing a PDF, understanding the context, it's very difficult. And I think that what contract book, what we're trying to do is to rethink it from first principles. We're basically saying, let's build contracts from the ground up as data, right? Yeah. Let's create templates, which are data. Let's be able to understand what these, what these, you know, what these things mean ahead of time so that we, when we repeat it again and again, we're actually really creating kind of a, a body of information, a body of data that we can use then later on. And I think that, you know, contract book is a part of having a really good sales tech stack, right? I think that having a good CRM is crucial to this. So, you know, the typical ones we see is your Salesforce, your HubSpot, your pipe drive, having good communication platforms. So things like Slack and Teams, and, but it's all part of an ecosystem, right? I think that, you know, modern technology and modern products have to be integrated with the things that go around them. And that's a big push for us as well, right? Workflows, which are not just about contracts because contracts typically you know, kick off processes in other systems. And it's really important that you are able to really build workflows. It's not enough just to trigger a ping, right? It's really build workflows that can execute elsewhere as well. Yeah, yeah, that's very interesting. That's definitely something that doesn't exist in any of these kind of signing uh, platforms that you've mentioned before that kind of maybe they like link to the to the tool that you're in, but that's about it. And and that it is really on that individual to go out and execute all of those different things exactly. or, or communicate with whoever should be. And it's tough. Like we know things slip through the cracks there all the time. Um, so it would yeah, absolutely be handy to have something that helped you uh, ease your mind <laughs> that those things exactly. are being taken care of. Um, what do you think is the right stage? You're talking about kind of tech stack and it's part of this sort of ideal tech stack. Um, when is the right stage for a company to adopt this type of uh, contracting process? So, you know, very uh, subjectively, I'd say from day one, uh, but, but I think that uh, because getting into good habits is, is good, but uh, the crucial point comes, I'd say, when you're sending more than 10 contracts a month. And when we talk about contracts, I think that we all very quickly talk about sales contracts because, you know, predictable revenue with, you know, sales leaders. But I think that it's not just when you, even when you think about a sales process, there's usually NDAs involved, right? There's yeah. usually sometimes data processing agreements. There's a lot of agreements which might come in there. So I would say that if a company is sending out more than 10 contracts a month across the board, I would start thinking about automation because I think that, you know, it, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like a sign I saw a Joe in the Juice, the coffee store, where it said like an avocado goes through this, like, I'm not ripe, I'm not ripe, I'm not ripe, I'm not ripe too late, throw me away. So it's yeah. kind of like that with contracts. Contracts aren't a problem until they really, really are. And the amount of times that we meet companies where, you know, if we had only met them six months before, their life would have been so much easier, but now they're scrambling and they're like, oh my God, we don't know where all our contracts are. It's in people's inboxes and there's DocuSigns oh, and a salesperson. And he left four months ago and then we, we, we closed down the Gmail. We don't know how to get it, right? So I, I think that like putting practices in place from the beginning is good. We love working with high growth companies and we 
make sure to, to make it kind of commercially feasible for them. But I think that getting into good practices around managing your contract, it's not sexy, but it's incredibly impactful. It's incredibly impactful. And I think that, you know, we don't worry about contract to contract work. And I can tell you that I have worried throughout the rest of my career. And tell me about the the kind of adjustment. So that's the, the high growth company presumably is a little bit more digitally advanced. Maybe they could wrap right. their head around a tool like this um, a little bit more easily. But what about these companies that have been slugging along on the PDF for or the whatever, the online version yeah. of the PDF for, for donkey's years? How yeah. how do you get them to make a change or, or how, what does that look like? That's, that's very interesting. And I think it's one of the things I was actually very surprised about when I joined contract work. Particularly in the US, actually, we have a big group of customers which are very small businesses everywhere from landscaping to paving to dog training, like really things that I wouldn't expect. And what they wanted was just an easier way. So for them, it's less about workflows and craziness and like all that kind of cool stuff that tech companies are very fond of. But they were like, I don't want to create this in Word and upload this to DocuSign and then it comes back into download and to save it. Just give me one place. Just make it easy for me to send it, get it signed and get it back. And I think that, you know, that's the simplicity that, you know, we contract book lives on this really interesting uh, kind of continuum between simplicity and sophistication. And I think that different people get different things out of contract book, but the very, you know, think about a mom and pop shop, right? Or like a small business, which needs to send out contracts. They are using a lot of systems to do that today, right? They're starting off, they're using GDocs or they're using Microsoft Word, let's say. They're creating the contract there. Then they're sending it over email. Then they're getting it back. Then they're exporting it as a PDF. Then they're uploading it into DocuSign or into Acrobat or into Preview or whatever they're using. They're getting it signed. They're sending it over email again. It's coming back. They're storing it somewhere, right? Dropbox, Box, their desktop, right? We've had a lot of their desktops. We can eliminate all of that. So one place, all of your contracts, then never think about it again. And I think that particularly when, you know, when you're a small business and you don't have a ton of you know, money to throw around at people and you don't want to pay legal counsel to deal with this, being able to just do it all in one, no integrations even is incredibly valuable as well. So I'd say those are the two areas, actually. Those that want to do crazy automations love the data aspect of it. And those that just want to get the contract done, yeah. they love us too. Yeah, that's a great point. It's definitely a good vote of confidence when your your mom and pop shops are like, "Yeah, I'm in," because they're yeah. they've got to be the group that's the happiest to just stick with the status quo. So, um, yeah, that I think speaks to how simple it really is and how easy it is to pick it up. Um, and like you said, you're kind of building it from the ground up, so it's it's more intuitive than using something like paper these days. We don't all use paper and write on paper and and kind of use PDFs in our day-to-day -day life anymore. So it's actually no Absolutely. longer intuitive, especially to the, um, like you mentioned, the large group of salespeople that are, that the PDF predates them. <laughs> That's not like their comfort zone. So Absolutely. there's no need to kind of stick with that. We see with a, with a lot of our sales people that they like, they really don't understand why people are using PDFs. And I think that, <laughs> you know, I, I get it. Like I get the PDF. I remember how valuable it was, right? I remember like sending files from a Mac to a PC and then the formatting goes out the window, right? Even if it was yeah. like a DocX and it was all a mess and you'd be like, oh no. And I remember like I was in school printing out like whatever it was. Yeah. So I get it. I get it. And, and I'm so thankful, you know, to Adobe for bestowing the PDF upon the world and they're wonderful, but it's like, thank you. Let us take it from here. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that's a perfect place uh, to wrap it up. You have, uh, if people want to learn more from you, if they want to get in touch with you, where can they do that? So acontractbook.com, we just rebranded. Big shout out to the marketing team. Absolutely beautiful. Um, feel free to reach out to me as well. It's ys.contractbook.com. Happy to chat with anybody that's interested. I love contracts. I love contract book. I love automating stuff. So happy to talk about this all day long. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this episode. It was really interesting. Thank you so much for your time, Sarah. Thank you. And thank you to all of you for joining us for another episode of the Predictable Revenue Podcast. Please, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button on YouTube so that you can be notified each week. We have wonderful guests joining us like Yoav and other revenue, marketing, customer success, all those leaders that can help you uh, run, run your sales org better. Uh, thank you. We'll catch you next time.